He's one of the greats. Peter Gammon's back on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Peter? I'm doing very well, Rich. Now, that's fascinating. I, I heard you talking about the, um, the really defining what, what can be done, what can't be done in slides. If players, by instinct, I was in Pittsburgh when Chris Coughlin wiped out Gong and ended his season, which um, was a tremendous blow because Gong is a really good player. But um, Chris Coughlin wasn't trying to hurt it anymore. Chase Utley plays very hard, and, and the, players tend to react with, or slide react whatever with such instinct. It's not like you, know, you watch it on replay or in slow motion. Oh, see, this is a dirty play. You know, they're not thinking about that. They're, tr- they're trying to make sure that somebody doesn't throw the ball back to first for the extra out. And I think it's important now that players have to think about it and have to think about um, this is the lane, and it's not just the instinct of breaking up the double play. And I just, as I say, I, I never thought of Cogden or Utley as um, trying to hurt anybody, but at the same time, Knowing what happens, I mean, it's the same thing with the, the, the way they they broke it down with catchers, um, and it, it's those are things in the game that they you needed someone to get seriously hurt uh, in a couple of occasions, um, I and mean, it had to be on a big stage. Obviously, Mets Dodgers is a big stage. Yes, indeed. Uh, it wasn't a big stage when it happened in Pittsburgh. It would have been a big stage if it happened to a Cub. <laughs> it, it wasn't a big stage because it happened to a pirate. And, you know, I, not only a really good guy, but a tremendous player. But And I know Chris Conley going back all the way to the Cape Cod League. I mean, he would never do that intentionally to wipe somebody out and, and injure them. But um, it is important to know. I mean, there are some things in baseball. Like, there is no rule about what is a check. There's no definition of what a check swing is. Really interesting in that regard. And it, the, the, when, you, when you talk about... When we're talking about this slide right now, Peter, it reminds me in the NFL about the strike zone in the NFL that the NFL started to tell everybody on the defensive side of the ball, reminding them, making rules of emphasis to get your get your helmet not or any of your strike zone, not in the head, but in the bread basket. And it took a while for players to get used to that. And some still can't get it right. I'm wondering if you think Major League Baseball players will be able to get this slide rule right as we enter the 2016 season. I think there'll be one or two instances. I think you make a great point. But I think that, that players will be cognizant. I'm presuming that that teams will go through a lot of sliding drills. I can guarantee you the Los Angeles Dodgers will with Dave Roberts there. Mm-hmm. Um but going through some, just, okay, this is what the rules say. This is what we have to be cognizant of. And I think you'll see almost every team go through. I don't think it has to be done more than a couple of times in spring training. But I mean, I've always believed that they should do more work on sliding drills anyway, because I don't think that many players know how to slide. So especially minor leaguers don't know how to slide. So in the end, I mean, it's unfortunate what happened with two two players getting hurt, but at the same time, Maybe it's it's just a, a better game for it. Peter Gammons joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, um, and then there's this thirty second clock. What, what is this all about? Uh, uh, how is this going to be enforced uh, to to get the the manager off the mound or the pitching coach off the mound with with a clock on the scoreboard? Apparently, Peter. Yeah, I, I'm all for this. Um, so actually, I, my idea was to to say that. Um, between the manager and the pitching coach, uh, one a team was allowed only two visits a game. Um, Period. You know, I, I yeah, I you know, I, I think it's great. You know, somebody goes out. A lot of it's done to stall to get relief pitchers ready and so forth. You know, you just got. I, I think it's it's good that that that, that managers, and pitching coaches have to make decisions. I'd like to see it. They do it in Japan. They limit the number of uh, trips to the mound. I. I'd even like to limit the number of trips a catcher can make to the mound. but Because uh, um, I, I, I do think that pitchers are so underestimated in terms of that athleticism and their intelligence mm. that they don't need someone telling them what to do. You know, it's, um, you know, throw strikes, but don't give them anything good to hit. Oh, wonderful. That's great advice. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Gammons. Skip. 
Yeah. Uh, so, a famous story with Art Fowler was the pitching coach of the Yankees. Yeah. Um, Ron Guidry and, and was having his first great year in '77, and and uh, Guidry was walked like three guys and was in trouble. Billy Martin sent um, Art Fowler out to the mound to talk to Guidry and. And uh, so Guidry said to him, you notice anything I'm doing in my mechanics? I'm something in my stride. What do you see? He said, Buffalo said, I don't know, but it sure is ticking Billy off. <laughs> I love stories like that, Peter. That's so so directly <laughs> up my alley. Uh, is it true I've been told you, you were at the Blue Jays today down in Florida? I'm with, with the Blue Jays. It was Jose Batista. What's going on with that? In the game. What's going on with that? I love the sound by um, earlier this week, Peter. Basically, said, well, you know. he's. I mean, Jose's one, unbelievably intelligent. And um, he, uh, right down to, he can tell you, because Rogers is a publicly held corporation, he can tell you now on page 48 of their, uh, of their, of their, of their, of their book, it says this. And so it's, in other words, he, he's aware of everything. He also is a guy that, just kept just bouncing around before he finally got the shot in 2010 and hit the 50 home runs. Um, and he, he's also now become um, an absolute fanatic about all forms of conditioning, nutrition, um, blood work done. Um, his, the person that he uh, references um, as to being one of the people he thinks is um, – would be a tremendous person to be a close friend of is the former coach of the Philadelphia Eagles now at Oregon. Um, he thinks that uh, um, he thinks that all that stuff that they did in Philadelphia is the way all teams should operate. So you have to understand how driven he is. Chip Kelly is or you're, you're referring to the Chip, Chip Kelly, Kelly way of doing things. So what, Chip, what's the, he, he idolizes Chip Kelly. Wow. So what what's what is the number that he gave to the Blue Jays from what best you can tell? Peter, uh, I think six years and about probably about 150. So I know what, it was six years, not five. Well, I know a team in the Bronx. What the years, I know a team in the Bronx he, would pull the trigger on that. Will Will the Blue Jays do that? I don't think so, but it'll be very interesting to see. It's really up to Rogers. The thing is that that um, I asked him. I started the interview with this question uh, after kicking around being a 20th round draft choice and, and being waived and Rule Five and all the rest. Finally, in 2010, at the age of, I mean, 2011, when you were 30, yeah. you hit 43 home runs. You tell me why at 40, you could do the same thing. And he was really good talking about it because he, he's such a, I mean, he works so hard at everything. And they have a, a, a whole new um, department of, um, of conditioning and health science with the Blue Jays, something Mark Shapiro has brought in. I think he'll really enjoy that. By I don't think he's going to end up signing, but I don't think it'll be a distraction because he'll be so focused he won't let anything distract him. Peter Gammon, and, sure. I mean, what, what, no, what, sure. when Sorry. somebody, when some baseball player starts talking about Chip Kelly, you know that this guy's given a lot of thought to it. <laughs> I know, no doubt about that. So, uh, are you of the mindset? Before I let you go, are you of the mindset that the Cubs are in fact the team to beat? I think they are. I think they are. I mean, you know, whether how Jake Arrieta bounces back from all the innings he threw last year, we'll see. Um, but I think their their young players are so good, and the veterans. I think that Lackey and Lester will be sensational for them down the stretch. I, they're they're really good. The Cardinals are always good. The Pirates are, I think, are the most creative organization in baseball, and we'll we'll be there. But. Uh, and it's going to be a great division, but I do think the Cubs are fabulous. We were just talking about it with the Blue Jays people this morning about how much young talent they have and how many directions um, Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer can go as the season goes along. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, I will be there uh-huh. when and if the Cubs finally win. Okay. Because that's a, it's a great story. I, just one quick story. We sure. were doing our concert and fundraisers and so forth, and we were um, Theo and, and and I were out with a, a bunch of players out at a, um, a nonprofit with a bunch of inner city kids that, that we always go to every year at uh, before we do the, our concert, and we had some raffle tickets, 
And um, so Theo draws a, a ticket out to read the, the number for, the ki- for this young kid to win whatever, some game or, you know, a jersey or something. And what is the raffle ticket number that he pulls out? 1908. <laughs> he gave the kid two presents and kept the ticket. <laughs> wow, Peter. That's a great story. I want to get a couple quick hitters with you before I let you go. Pablo Sandoval's weight. What do you make of that, Peter? Um, I think it's a real problem for the Red Sox for this reason. I watched him. He, he's done a lot of conditioning. His legs are much stronger. He's much lighter on his feet. His swing is much better. And he, he's able to, 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 um, to really get low on ground balls, which he couldn't do last year. The problem is he's really sensitive. And, I mean, just the Boston papers are unmerciful. And I, I just don't know if Pablo can handle the heat he's going to take in Boston. I think it's, he may be so sensitive that they have to do something and send him somewhere where n- nobody will really take it as seriously as they do in Boston. I mean, they've already run, um, they've already run all sorts of pictures on the, every day on the front page of the Boston Herald. There's a, there's a thing about uh, Pablo's weight and what he looks like. So this is going to be a real problem for them. Fortunately, they're so deep. That I think they can get by at third base, mm-hmm. but I also I, I really worry about what happens. I know Mike Kruko was quoted as saying he has a serious eating disorder, and I, I, I I'm not I'm not sure that that eating disorder won't t- turn into a Boston disorder. And I'd love to get your thoughts on Don Mattingly, who fought the man Steinbrenner for for facial hair and the length of his hair back in the '80s and '90s, instituting a no facial hair rule with the Marlins, Peter? You know, I haven't been to the Marlins yet, and Don is a very good friend of mine. I'm I'm a little stunned by it, but I think that Don and Jeffrey Loria are very good friends, and um, it just, you know, sometimes it's always been said that the biggest job a general manager has is, is managing up. The biggest job a manager often has is managing up. So um, I think it's, okay, Loria wants clean-shaven team, fine for the time being. Um, but if come middle of July and uh, John Carlos Stanton is having trouble with his um, razor blade uh, <laughs> supply, if John Carlos decides to grow a beard, I think that rule will, will fade fast. Uh-huh. And the last one, uh, did you see the ride Cespedes showed up in spring training with Peter? Yes, I think. What, what's the that best? Had- what's the best story you've had about somebody showing up to spring training? as a um, finale to our conversation here. What's your best one? I, I think one, one, one of my favorite all time was when um, one year when the Yankees were still in Fort Lauderdale mm-hmm. w- watching um, uh, one of the Perez brothers and Mel Hall pulled into the Yankee parking lot at the same time. Mel Hall, you know, all leather and, a, and uh, with a motorcycle, uh, on a motorcycle with a leather helmet, and um, Pasquale Perez showing up in a limo because he was banned from driving in the United States. So he had the biggest, one of the biggest limos I've ever seen, and Pasquale. it was completely stocked with all sorts of stuff. We actually went into the limo with him when I was working for ESPN, asked him the question, is there anything else that you really would like to have in this limo? He looked at the camera and said, blondes. <laughs> Peter, you're the best. Thanks for joining. I can't wait to the right, next Rich. time. You be well, Peter. Thank you. Of course. That's the one and only Mighty Gamos. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs>